able to uh, connect with so many of you. Um, um, the miracle of teams, really great to see kind of the audience out here today. And um, thanks, April, and thanks, Michelle, for bringing this together. So I wanted to walk everyone through kind of what Syntax is. When we announced Microsoft Syntax last fall, um, we describe it as content AI in the flow of work. Syntax is a really large initiative for us that's with over 20 separate products in the family. And so I want to set a little bit of context for what it is and why it's reshaping it the way it is before we go and talk through um, kind of looking at it in action. So for those of you I have not uh, gotten to meet before, my name is Chris McNulty. I have been with Microsoft for about nine years. Um, I'm director of product marketing for what we call our next gen content services offerings. And that includes some of our um, older technologies, frankly, like SharePoint, OneDrive and Microsoft Search, and some of our emerging areas like Viva and Syntex and Copilot and others. So great to be able to walk you through what we've got today. When we think about kind of the breadth of the Microsoft Cloud, um, we're adding our customers more properly are adding over a billion over billions of documents on an average workday. Um, and that you know helps roll up to data from IDC and other analysts projecting that we are on a run rate to reach 130 billion terabytes or zettabytes um, by 2025. And organizations are spending um, over 54 billion a year to store and manage that content. But that explosion of content, whether we're just looking at the parts in Microsoft 365 or at the even broader secular trends with that information, we know that there's lots of lost opportunities, that it is impossible to process your slice of that, you know, that billions of documents a week um, with manual tools. Um, people are making decisions on poor information sets, and it's really expensive both in terms of productivity as well as operating cost to have information in lots of different information silos. And we know that there are opportunities to be able to use AI to help us um, do more with information to information processing into scale to help you as customers focus on your own competitive advantages. You're the experts in your content and your processes and being able to bring discipline to how costs get managed at scale. So, let's see if this will click. So let me introduce a little of this category to you, what we call content AI. Business runs on content. Proposals, contracts, presentations, invoices, video, and more. By 2025, there will be 130 billion terabytes of unstructured content. And today, much of it is locked up in siloed repositories or sitting as paper in a warehouse. Organizations spend $46 billion a year storing and managing content and lose countless hours of productivity manually processing and finding the right information. Storage alone is not the answer. Organizations need a new approach. With advancements in cloud and AI, Content AI transforms how content is created, processed, and discovered, empowering people and automating workflows at scale. Microsoft Syntax is Content AI integrated in the flow of work. With Microsoft Syntax, you can understand and assemble content with tagging, summarization, translation, and auto-assembly. Discover and reuse content with AI-powered search, e-signature, and integration into business processes. Analyze and protect content throughout its life cycle with AI-driven security and compliance, backup and restore, and advanced security management. Unleash your content. Power your business with Microsoft Syntex. So let me just, hang on, my mouse has gone lost here. Okay, much better. Um, 
and just a little bit of detail going on in that video. Um, that video is actually um, filmed on site in what we call Wanastera Park, which is Microsoft's newest building. It is where my team and the whole of cloud marketing uh, reside now. So um, 1,200 touchdown spaces, lots of interesting breakout things. And the folks that you see in that video, that's the are members of the product team that we enlisted into that. So a little bit of a peek into um, what we're doing and how we're doing it. Okay, so Microsoft Syntex is all of these things and more. And when we tell the story of Syntex, we usually tell it with these three sets of capabilities. First, all of the tooling that we have to take AI and automation and bring it into the transactions that you need to have with your content, whether it's for things like contract management or order processing, all of the ability to read, tag, integrate information, that's the first part of it. The second, how do we bring in management tooling at scale? How do we take the ability to um, help you manage the protection of your information across M365 with backup tools and make sure that the, that you're storing information as it grows at the appropriate cost level, all inside M365? And the last part, which I'm only going to be able to speak to at the highest level, is what we're doing for developers. Um, the, with those capabilities. So let's just make sure folks know what we're talking about. So when we say that Syntex has products to help you enhance your content, it's mostly these capabilities. The tools that we have to let you build no-code AI models using document processing, whether those are for structured, semi-structured, completely unstructured, um, pre-built, there's a whole bunch of modeling that, that goes there, being able to classify, extract metadata, and apply um, automated security, um, dynamic translation across dozens of supported language, summarization in place, um, being able to build new documents and new processes with content assembly and e-signature for structured document generation, and digital file tools to be able to apply OCR, to be able to do image tagging and automatically transcribe videos that are out there. That's the principal story, what we say, it enhance. Next, the capabilities to manage that information at scale, making sure that you can back up your entire M365 tenant, moving content from SharePoint and Teams to the right cost of storage with Syntex archiving, and um, our advanced governance tools um, that are rolling out as I speak, um, known as SharePoint Advanced Management, to be able to uh, discover content at risk of being overshared and make making sure that data owners and users are enlisted in reviewing and testing and resetting those permissions across the board. The last thing, and I can't say a ton about this yet, but because uh, we are expecting to make some big announcements over the, in this over the next few months, uh, but we've heard from a lot of customers who run their business in M365, and they want to get maximum value for your content by keeping it in M365. And that's a real design principle we have across the board. If you think about um, the lifespan of a document, most documents begin life in M365, but the moment that they become interesting, because we need to get them signed, they're going to be turned into a contract, um, we come up with all these ways to move it out of M365. So you will go to an e-signature, it will wind up in some other document cloud somewhere, or it can, um, or information when it's being managed, um, to manage storage limits, people or customers are resorting to deleting files rather than keeping everything intact. What we're doing here is really making sure we have a great developer experience that lets you leverage the full richness of the M365 content management backend with versioning and co-authoring, search, security, compliance, everything that you know you can do with files across M365, but without the front ends. So being able to, for organizations who have come to us, being able to build new shapes and new kinds of applications is something we're really excited about taking the wraps off very soon. So before I start showing you a little bit of syntax in action, let me just jump back here and see if there's any questions that have come up in the chat. And yeah, nothing's come up, Chris, so I think you're good. Great. So far. OK, terrific. So let's look at a little bit of syntax in action.
Microsoft Syntex brings content AI into the flow of work to help organizations manage and automate document-centric processes. Let's walk through some powerful examples. Syntex can translate multiple contracts from different languages at the click of a button, detecting the source language and translating them into a chosen language in seconds. Syntex also uses AI for document summarization, which automatically summarizes key topics, providing links to the sections to save you time. You can even send the document directly from Syntex for e-signatures. With Syntex, you can build AI-powered models to automatically classify and extract information by training a model to recognize what to look for. You can highlight the content you need to extract from each document, then upload sample contracts, where you can tag the appropriate fields and the model to know where to look. A trained model can process newly received contracts, automatically extracting and categorizing key details in seconds. Okay, and we're, I actually want to jump back into live code here to show you something. Um, because there's details that when we use video demos that you may not um, always pick up on, but I think it's fundamental to understanding kind of what Syntax does. So when you see this screen, to me, this is one of the magical things that we do inside of Syntax. Um, we're bringing AI together from all across um, Microsoft, some from Azure, some from Power Platform, some from native AI delivered by M365. And so when I use what's here called the teaching method for unstructured document processing, that's native M365 AI. Freeform selections, layout, that's coming from Power Platform, from AI Builder. And down here is where we're starting to build up the pre-built models that come from the Azure team uh, with contracts, ID cards, um, um, tax forms uh, being very cl close to being on deck and should be showing up here over the next few weeks. But just one point I wanted to make about how we look at that information. Hang on one second here. Just tweaking something here I wanted to show you. So Syntex also delivers um, experiences both for power users as well as for people who are makers who are constructing processes. And I want to look, give you a preview of what some of those experiences are. So first and foremost, when um, we know that there's been a lot of interest in e-signature and being able to do that kind of in context when you are in a Word doc or a PDF or a place where that needs to be done. And when I'm invoking e-signature, e -signature, uh, you, we do a lot of work directly with our prime partners in this area, uh, most notably Adobe and DocuSign, um, so that you can choose which signature providers that you want to make available to people across your organization. And when we ship e-signature, that'll be a first-party solution that you can use, again, to keep your content in M365. So here, I'm going to select Syntax e-signature, and I'll specify who needs to sign it and what messages we want to send. And when I'm structuring the document, I will just specify where I want each one of these sign signers to do something in the document, drag it down there. And that's all that's really involved in sending the document. Now, when someone receives it, um, you'll see that the document stays in M365 where you had it stitched up. They get an email with a link to a live hot version of the document where they can add a wet signature or a cryptographic signature. At all points in time, the document stays where I expect it to be. And when the process is finished, I'm notified that this document has now been signed. And I could take additional steps if I wanted to with workflow, uh, with alerts, with rules, um, being able to orchestrate more processes, whether I'm doing it using the intrinsic rules engine for lightweight processes like copying and moving files, or if I'm using Power Automate for something that needs to be a little bit more robust. Some of the other experiences um, that we've shipped 
something we call content query. So when you extract metadata from all of these files that come in, um, we're now giving you the ability to run those as faceted searches driven by forms, and it's coming soon for natural language as well, to be able to drill down and just get to those capabilities. So content query historically has been part of the what was the SharePoint syntax seat license, but we are gonna be um, making that available to more users in the coming months. Another key interaction that we have is universal annotation. So this, what we mean by this is not just the ability to add ink on top of any document, not just a Word document, but also coming very soon, the ability to do at mentions, assign tasks, the same way that you might do them in a Word document today. We're bringing that to all of the 380 files that are supported through the file viewers in M365. Okay. So next I wanna turn our attention away from what I might think of as power user experience towards what does it look like to build one of these processes? Microsoft has a broad range of tools, as you mentioned before, some coming from Azure, some coming from AI Builder, some coming from Syntex. So in this example, I'm gonna walk through a process um, to build a, a, a workflow essentially for processing inbound lease agreements. So in this scenario, um, we are a pro the property owners. I'm going to build a set of rules that will allow me to, when I receive a new, newly completed lease agreement, to go through it, tag it, classify it, to extract the right metadata, and then generate the right notice to go to the property owner telling them that they need to get the property ready to be, to be leased, clean it, get keys, and so forth. So the first part of this, um, we're gonna start inside of Syntex saying, I want to classify and extract a model. And when I say I wanna build a new model, I can apply one that's already there or create a brand new one. And for this one, we're gonna extract it by text pattern and layout. This is one of the capabilities which comes from our AI builder integration. So we walk through the process, we decide what fields we want. This is for real estate. So we're gonna grab tenant and a couple of other fields. Next, I'm going to lay out weird, sets of documents that are going to have common layouts and you can have multiple layouts that you share here and then visibly mark up in the document um, with as few as five training documents where that information can be extracted and i can specify other details about those models such as um um, um how they're how they need to be secured um you know uh at rules around retention and all the rest so that's all we need to do at a high level to create a document processing model. No code gets created as you go through and tag documents. Um, the AI is being written for you behind the scenes. The next part of the process for generating those outbound letters, we start with just one. And so what content assembly from Syntax, we just take a typical Word document and I'm gonna mark it up with sections of the document that we call placeholders. Now, placeholders can be filled in by manual input, they can be derived from data sources, or they can be derived from a workflow. And the last part of this whole process, is once this is all put together, we use Power Automate. And if you're not familiar with Power Automate, this is a very simple flow. Power Automate um, is based on the idea of triggers and actions. What starts a process, and what happens inside of that process. And you can build really robust and complex workflows um, with loops and branches and all sorts of conditions. This is very simple. What's saying is when I see that uh, syntax model is being applied to a document, I want you to trigger this workflow to generate a new document. And you'll see that all of the values that we put into that uh, content assembly template are being derived either from the model or from other values here in the form. So what this all looks like coming together is if I'm uploading agreements, they can come in through email, I could be manually uploading them. Syntax will stop and think about it for a few seconds, and then we'll go through and extract all of that metadata. And then once that metadata is extracted, um, we know that the model has already fired. So we can see the confirmation letters have already been generated. So here's the one that's gonna go out to Grace Owens that their property has been rented starting on 
September 12th. Here's what the rent is going to be. And again, I can further customize this process to generate this as a PDF, send it out via email. What, you know, the sky's the limit for that. So Syntex is designed to work with the tools that you already have, um, but being able to integrate with Viva Topics, uh, to be able to automatically add additional layers of security to content that you're using for knowledge management, and to be able to automatically apply taxonomy to trigger the creation of topics that match things that are in, in those fields. It also ties out closely with Microsoft Search by being able to provide content enrichment. Um, it leverages the sensitivity and retention labels supplied by Purview. It is based on the SharePoint Foundation, as you, you know, we started to talk about. It is closely coupled to Power Platform. Before we talk through some customer examples, let me just see what we may have in the chat. Nothing yet. Okay. So. With your indulgence, I'd like to show you a little bit of how easy it is to work with pre-built documents. So um, let's cancel out of this screen. And so for this example, just so you, we know that we're starting clean, I'm going to create a new document library. And we can specify default sensitivity okay. labels if we want, um, or whether this should show up in site navigation. And we don't need to do that. We now have a document library. There's nothing in it. So the next thing I want to do is to create a new model. So when I create a new model, in this case, I am going to use a pre-built model. So a pre-built model knows how to pull information out of scan images and PDFs uh, to be able to extract that information live. So let's do this as ZZZ MN receipts. And I can map it to an existing content type or create a new one. And I'm just going to be able to create a new one. I can also say um, what retention labels I want to specify. So using purview i can say anytime this model fires and you have a positive classification i want you to treat this as a contract which say has a 10-year retention period um we're not going to need to do anything like that here but just wanted to acknowledge that you can fully automate applying that content um, at scale um, with multiple labels okay so it's going to ask us for some files to analyze and let me go find some files to analyze There's a couple from a few years ago. Okay, next. And so the system is thinking about it. And you can see this first image came through sideways, um, but syntax is pretty good about being able to suggest things that I might want there. So the merchant name makes sense. The total we want, date of the transaction, and we may not want the transaction time. Okay. So we can get out of these. Let's go to our next file. All right. With Second file, a receipt from an Uber trip, and it's thinking about what it can tell us. Um, and it hasn't found the transaction date or the merchant name, so we can, with a pre-built model, you can't do a lot of customization, but here's how it's gonna process this image. Um, So it's, it's not looking for 
currency values here, but it's going to at least try to get these out. Our next file, it's a different Uber receipt that it's looking at. Anyway, this is all for training. So this last hotel receipt comes up. Um, and it's seeing the total. It's got the vendor name. But these are all fine. And so the next thing I have to do, I've built the model, is I have to apply it somewhere. So I can go right to the environment I was in. Um, you can do this, by the way, with PowerShell at scale to get, if you want to apply a model to dozens or hundreds of locations, you can. But in this case, let's just go to the environment where I just was working. And now I forgot where I was. Um, so let's just come back to here. That's in, I think I did in contract processing. Okay. There it is. And again, we can say when this gets applied, should you show model information? Should you show file thumbnails or stay with the current default view? So let's show you the file th thumbnails view. Okay. We can go to that library. There's a model that's live there, but there's nothing in it. Ooh, interesting. There we go. Let's upload some receipt files that I have sitting around. And let's upload some other ones. Well, anyway, you get the general idea. It's going to sit there and it's going to think about these. Um, And let's grab a couple of other receipts. And copy them. So we've got a pretty broad range of types that we want to put there. So let's copy them over here. And the system is going to think about these. Um, in fact, it's already pulled some information together. So we can see they've arrived at the new location. And if we look at the properties of this document, uh, this is a receipt from 2019. And we've pulled out name of the merchant name, total transaction date. So we've already had processing running on this, so we are in good shape. Uh, the last thing I want to show you is a little bit of how we integrate um, between Viva and Syntex. So in this example, um, we're going to start with a different kind of model that we've built for what we call investor documents. These, if I open one up, you'll see are um, 
10 case that is a regulatory filing from securities industry uh, for the company Amgen in this case. So we have a number of these structured documents that um, we've built some models to process. So if I go and take a look at the models that we've built here, so this model was built using unstructured document processing, which is a little bit more powerful, a little bit more complex because I can do things, um, you know, I tr I train the classifier and then I do an entity extraction. And when I'm first and foremost, when I am training the classifier is a process of using some positive and negative examples just to help AI distinguish what is a 10K, what is not a 10K? And so you walk through the wizard and say, yeah, you know, this is a 10, you know, this looks like a 10K. And I see a simplified view of the text. I can also go back and take a look at the original if I have any questions about what I'm looking at. But that's the process for originally training a model. We also can do rules about extracting specific values. And so here, I've gone through and I have tagged where the st stock ticker should be found inside many of these documents. So we've done it for Amgen, for Amazon, uh, Boeing, uh, a couple of these that are around here. So I've already put that tagging in place. And the thing is when that information is coming, uh, where we're extracting that, that is a managed metadata column itself. So when these documents are, or get tagged, they will auto, always put on that managed metadata taxonomy column value will be set there. Um, why does that matter? Well, here we can see. Um, and I can do further things here. So you can add rules for if you see multiple values showing up, do you keep the first value, keep the last value, remove the dupes, um, set a default. Um, so there's no code processing I can do when I've got more complex documents that I might want to handle here. Um, and as we saw before, I can specify sensitivity and retention labels that should be used anytime this is seen. But when I look at where this places, where this library is, where this model is showing up, let's look at the investor docs area. So here we can see um, if I just look at 10Ks, I can see the extracted metadata that's been applied here. And we have a field here called ticker tag, which is actually mapped to um, a managed metadata column. You can see right here, ticker tag. If you're unfamiliar with managed metadata or taxonomy columns, as we call them now, we're going to take a look at that now. So with a taxonomy column, you can have a standard hierarchical multilingual way of applying classifications to information that may live anywhere in your tenant. And when I look at the term store, This is the place where I go in and can structure what's happening inside my hierarchical classification. So you see, you know, we've done one for a demo with colors, but there's one here that says securities. So this is where um, all those field values get built up. And a couple of tips and tricks here. First, this is considered an open turn set so that as syntax finds a 10K from a company it's never seen before, it will add that turn here and put the tag on the document. Second thing, the integration back into Viva. I can also see the history of um, terms that have been found and been injected as the basis for um, working with Viva topics. Now we haven't talked a lot about Viva, so I'm gonna just jump over quickly and show folks this is the master table of information of all of the subjects of interest that have been found in my demo environment. Um, I can 
click onto them to see a page which can be built dynamically or um, enriched by interactivity. But Viva Topics already is good at using the graph to pull that information together. What and the usual experiences that people have, let's just go to our root site here. So, you know, you can see as part of um, what's here on the page, I can see references to topics. I can also see references to topics when they show up inside of email. So if I say I want to write a new email, I'm going to send this to Irvin. I'm going to CC myself. Let's discuss using the hashtag, being able to invoke Mark 8 and J and J. So I'm able to attach knowledge um, using a simple hashtag gesture to find what's out there. And the same affordance will come to me in places like chat. So when I see references mentioned here, I hover over this. It will call up for me the, a topic card, which will give me a capsule summary of all the information that we know about this. So you can start to see that some of these are references to stock tickers. And what brings all of that together is with syntax, we can automatically configure um, the system to say, anytime you see new topics here, I want you to automatically try to generate um, a term from that. And so what that ultimately means, and we can see the history of these requests, there has to actually be content. So generating, generating a topic for a term that's never been used um, isn't going to be as successful as ones that have been. So, you know, I can see, sorry, wrong click. You know, we already have a term for WBA, Walgreen Boots Alliance. And by because I can sit, use taxonomy to pass information over into Viva Topics, um, when we look at that page in detail, you'll see that, and I've done a little bit of tuning of this, um, by putting a couple of friendlier pictures on it, but it's able to bring information together from a couple of different sources, not just investor documents, but also suggestions about some trades that people have done about the, with this historically. And then being able to see a suggested relationship because people who trade Walgreens may also be trading Starbucks. And um, we'll see, you'll see, by the way, you'll see the same things if I'm looking at a more complex topic. Um, when I'm looking at the Mark 8, for example, um, you can be as rich as you want with the content that you have. So being able to find not just people and pin files and suggestions, but being able to look at the full map of related knowledge and navigate my way around it. So if I see that Mark 8 seems to be related to Katahdin, I can then drill into this, understand what this project is, what the relationship is. There's a picture of Katahdin, which is a mountain in Maine, um, but maps of related, and again, maps of related topics and sites. And Syntax can help you get all of your content ready for what we're doing with generative AI solutions like Viva Topics. So I want to just kind of leave you with a couple of thoughts for some customers who have been successful with Syntax and then open it up for questions. So the first one I really want to focus on is uh, the U.S. golf manufacturer TaylorMade. TaylorMade is the best performing golf brand in the world, and we strive to never be done and always innovate, and our culture really supports that. You know, I think content is king. Uh, I think we hear that uh, everywhere.
In my world, data is paramount, right? So we had a legal team that was manually managing their content for trademark and patents. And we had these lawyers literally spending hours and hours of time filing and moving documents to be able to be shared effectively later. Um, Lighthouse helped us create the models with these very complex documents. So now the users can simply take their their documents, move them over to Syntax, and Syntax can classify, meta tag, and pull all the information that they once used to do manually. We feel like this increases the learning, decreases the amount of manual labor, decreases the complexity, and then also increases the throughput in terms of the ability to look at documents, manage those, and keep those within the risk tolerances that our clients expect. The more time we can save with our legal team to not having to file documents and not having to search for documents and actually be able to be an attorney, to me, is a huge value. We feel that constantly innovating and being ahead of the curve helps our customers succeed. There's a more efficient, better way to search, find, and tag data. And there's a more efficient way to hit a golf ball. There's a more efficient way to, to play golf and we try to strive for that every day. TaylorMade is powered by innovation and we love that Microsoft is helping us here. So TaylorMade, just one of the hundreds of customers who are uh, innovating and being successful right now. Another one I'll just speak to uh, quickly is London Stock Exchange Group, um, who are using Syntex in a process very similar to what I showed you with um, the US 10Ks. They have these very lengthy um, key investor information documents. And they had they have a team of about 200 analysts who are spending 20 hours a week reading and tagging documents so they can enter them in workflows and find them later on. And they've been able to reduce that time down to about 60 minutes per analyst per week. So some real savings going on there. Uh, there's two quick roadmap slides I want to press up. So um, I mentioned before, Syntex is, um, uh, was originally introduced as part of SharePoint as an extra seat license. We Last fall, we also announced a change in our business model. We are moving in entirely to a consumption pay-as-you-go basis. So we're taking things that previously required a seat license up front and giving M365 users the ability to run them on a pay-as-you-go basis. For unstructured document processing, it is um, um, a, a, it is, I believe, five cents per page, um, and similar run rates for each of those things. There's a lot of detail on this slide, but I really want to focus your attention on the simplified ver uh, view of what we've done. So, um, over the past month, we've taken unstructured document processing and pre-built document processing and made them available to most M365, O365 plans on a pay-as-you-go basis, no upfront licensing needed. Um, for the rest of this quarter, uh, the additional capabilities for content assembly, image tagging, OCR, summarization, translation, and applying taxonomies, those are all being moved into paygo licensing as well so just a couple of cents per transaction you don't have to buy seat licenses for everyone else and early in the um in the summer uh universal annotations and content query uh those will be just distributed as branded value into m365 e3 and e5 so um we're really trying to make it easier for millions more people to be able to get access to syntax services without having a lot of upfront licensing complexity there. So tons of resources that are available. Um, I, you, one of the best places to go is to go to aka.ms slash syntax slash start for guides, adoption, tips and tricks, ways to get um, to learn more about bringing syntax into your organization. And so that said, Melissa, great to be here today. I know we have a few minutes for questions. And let's see who wants to go first. All right, feel free to share them in the chat or even come off mute. All 
All right, um, Ryan's got one. Yeah, yeah go ahead. So a question about syntax backup. Um, I can't tell you everything. I can tell you that we are in private preview right now and that syntax backup, um, we will officially announce the product and public preview in a couple of months. Um, it is designed to allow you to back up information across your tenancy. So not just SharePoint. Um, in the first implementation, we'll also back up Exchange. Um, and we've got a pretty clear roadmap to take it to let you back information up um, across the rest of your M365 tenancy. Um, structurally, your information is kept inside of your tenancy because it makes it, um, there are speed of light problems with you know, large organizations that if you are moving all of your files someplace else, if it's in Azure, file share, or some other cloud, and you have some sort of disaster or need to bring things back, there's practical limitations to how quickly petabytes of information can be brought across the public internet. Um, whereas by running backup and restore operations inside of your tenancy on the same M365 um, data center backplane, um, that can be lightning quick, getting data back in minutes and so forth. Um, it's similar to eSignature in that it's our goal to create a solution that works inside of your M365 tenancy, but we do not have any plans um, to turn syntax backup into a general backup and recovery utility that you could use for backing up desktops and VMs and your SAP instance and Salesforce. Um, we have some great partners who offer solutions like that, and we're continuing to work with them at being able to tap into Syntax's backup capability for M365 because we think it will be a more efficient process for um, our customers there. Okay. You are welcome, Ryan. I am going to go back to the roadmap because sometimes that also triggers some additional thoughts and questions. Yeah, Chris, I was curious about the, the future, the e-signature. Is that going to be in relation with uh, partner uh, e-signature products? Uh, tell me more what you mean by in relation. I'm thinking like um, DocuSign or some of those standard ones out there. Yeah, I mean, this is, I mean, what we are building will be a Microsoft first party e-signature solution. Um, gotcha. We're not, you know, both DocuSign, Adobe Sign, and a number of other players who are there. Um, have really sophisticated multi-step um, processing workflows, and we're not trying to uh, do, deal with that, but rather we are trying to address the need for organizations to keep their information inside of M365. So it'll be a first party signature and we'll be able to pick it in the same ways that you might pick an Adobe or um, a DocuSign, except this one is built and um, backed by Microsoft. Nice. And when uh, I guess I'll I'll go again because uh, I'm really curious about the MS Stream video future. What uh, what does that mean specifically? Are you talking about large? Um, number of video files yeah we're looking at ways to make it easier for you to um to share and distribute video to um outside of your tenancy um along with the right analytics and processing so it is spiritually close if you think about it being able to use AI to process a document and being able to use AI to pre-process a video are spiritually similar. Um, and so we're, 
um, it's something that we're working on, but there's no dates to share on. Um, we there, but we want to make it easier for you to be able to share videos out of M365. Awesome. All right. I think okay. uh, I think we might be it. So thank okay. you so much, Chris. Awesome. Oh, my pleasure.